What up guys and welcome back to the Fit Man Cook Kitchen. Today we are spicing it up in the kitchen because I have got a user request video for you all today. I got a lot of requests after my grocery store essentials video to do a tour of my spice cabinet because we all know that good spices can actually make or break any recipe and that's especially important whenever we are trying to eat much healthier. All right, so let me show you where all the magic happens. This is what you have to have if you really are serious about getting started in the kitchen. I'm just kidding, guys. You don't really need all this, and this is just you know the result of me not having a family and having too much disposable income. What I thought would be a better idea is if I give you all a list of all the essential spices and seasonings that you will need to get started cooking in the kitchen. Let's get started. All right, so how did I come up with this list? I pretty much went to fitmancook.com, went through a ton of recipes and whittled them down to the most common spices and seasonings that I've been using. Here is my A-team list right here. Start out with some garlic powder and some onion powder. Another essential is paprika. I love paprika, it's one of my favorite spices. Now there is regular paprika, which is a really fiery red. I prefer the smoked paprika. Most of the paprika here that we buy in the States is made from sweet red peppers. But the smoked paprika, whenever they smoke it, it gives it this like orange texture, but it also reminds me a little bit of like barbecue. I can put a Southwest spin on almost any recipe with the smoked paprika. Next up is cayenne, because you need a little bit of spice, a little bit of heat in your life. A little bit goes a long way. And one thing that I learned early on whenever I was cooking was to be careful about actually cooking in a skillet with cayenne because you will create your own tear gas in your own kitchen. You have to evacuate. And I'm, I'm very serious, I've done that so many times. Next up is cumin. I love cumin. Cumin has a very nutty flavor. It's very popular in a lot of Mediterranean dishes. Cumin is kind of like cilantro. They either love it or they hate it. I just think that it provides a great base for recipes. So I cook with this quite often because a lot of my diet is influenced by Mexico and also other Latin American cuisines. Okay, so those are the seasonings. Now we're gonna move on to the herbs. I've got oregano. Oregano is one of my go-tos. Fresh oregano has a very pungent and maybe even like bitter taste, but like most herbs, it's very aromatic. It can provide like almost a very, very subtle herby and minty flavor to dishes. Tossing this into Italian cuisine and also Mexican cuisine, it actually pairs very, very well. Rosemary, this is an incredible herb. I love to buy this fresh because I think this is one of the most aromatic herbs out there. It reminds me a lot like Christmas because it smells like pine leaves, a little bit goes a very long way. It's great within the slow cooker recipes, but for the fit kitchen, you can get dried oregano. Fresh thyme is also pretty pungent and bitter, but I like the dried thyme. To me, it's mildly sweet, but it's super aromatic. It provides a really herby flavor to things. One of my go-to recipes for thyme is burgers. I think out of all the herbs here, it mixes better with other spices. It's not gonna be overpowering, but you can still kind of get that nice herby flavor. Now for the spices, I kind of keep it simple here. The first one is gonna be cinnamon. It's probably one of my favorite spices to have in my kitchen, because I find it to be the most versatile. You can put this in both sweet and savory recipes. What I like about it too is that it has a lot of health benefits. If you have got this really intense sugar craving, what I like to do oftentimes is just sprinkle some, some cinnamon on it because it provides provides that sweet flavor and it satiates that need to have something sweet. It's also good in savory recipes. So let's say that something is a little bit too spicy for you, a little bit too hot. Instead of adding stuff in like vinegar, you could add in some cinnamon. Nutmeg. Admittedly, I don't really cook a lot with nutmeg. I do like it as a spice. I think it's a good one for you to have in your kitchen. It's very, very sweet. It's very aromatic and you don't need a whole bunch of it. About a teaspoon will do for an entire <laughs> recipe because that's how strong it is. Think about getting some of your favorite starchy vegetables and putting it into like this nice medley and then using some nutmeg to, to sweeten the entire dish. I think this would be a great addition to your kitchen. And lastly, allspice, it's a blend of cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg. Again, a little bit goes a long way. This spice really reminds me of the holidays, even though it has a very peppery bite to it. It reminds me of gingerbread cookies. That is my A-list of spices and seasonings. So what I thought would be fun now is that if I show you how to mix and match some of the spices together to create some of the rubs that I enjoy the most. Now, admittedly, you can go and you can buy 
your own rub, you can buy your own mixes. But I think there's something to be said about experimenting in the kitchen because the more you get comfortable with mixing and matching spices together, then the more competent you become as a cook. We want as much variety as possible and that involves your kitchen IQ. So before we start mixing and matching some spices together, I, I do want to address the whole thing about sea salt and pepper. I've just always left out a lot of salt from my blends because I actually want to season to taste when I actually make the recipe. I just think it's better if you kind of learn what the spices taste like individually and then together, and then use salt to go ahead and season to taste. So that's why I personally like to leave salt out. First up, we're gonna make an easy chili powder. Now you can, we're gonna start out with cumin. So I'm gonna add in about two to three tablespoons of cumin, two tablespoons of garlic powder. And you could either use the garlic powder or you can use the granulated garlic. Just make sure that it doesn't have salt. You just want pure garlic. Cayenne. If you don't like a lot of heat, then I would suggest maybe adding in just a teaspoon of cayenne. Well, I'm gonna customize this one and use a smoked paprika because it's gonna give it a great smoky flavor. So I'm gonna add in two tablespoons. And if you want, guess what? I'm gonna do one tablespoon of that and then one tablespoon of regular paprika. We're gonna add in some oregano. Now most oregano comes in the dried form, but you can also buy it when it's powdered. You can just add it in like this, or if you have one of these, a mortar and pestle, you can add in a tablespoon of oregano here, and then mash it up as much as you, as much as you can into powder, and then pour it in. Give this a good stir. And then you can buy these little spice jars. These cost me a dollar. Put in a little funnel. And again, there's no salt. You can add salt. If you are gonna start out, I'd probably add maybe like a teaspoon of salt to this, but I don't think you need it. And there you have it, your own personal chili powder that you can use. Next, we're gonna make a Cajun rub. I'm gonna start out with some, some regular paprika. We're gonna do about four tablespoons of this one. Cajun food is very spicy. Again, because this is mine, I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon of smoked paprika too. I'm gonna add in some onion powder, Maybe about two teaspoons of this. Probably the equal amount of garlic powder. I'm actually gonna add a little bit less. Cajun food is very spicy, very hot. So we're gonna add in at least one tablespoon of cayenne. We're gonna to toss in about two tablespoons of thyme, and that's it, but if you have it, it's a bonus, toss in some sage, just a little bit of sage. It's not required, but I think it just really enhances the flavor a little bit more. Give this a good stir. If you wanna taste this beforehand, and this is my way to do it, I put a little bit of sea salt here in my hand, just a little bit, and then take a little bit of the spice. Woof, that cayenne is popping but that's just the right amount. And I tell you what, that salt is just right, so it lets me know that I can season this with salt afterwards. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to make a seasoned salt. I'm gonna use sea salt, so I'm gonna add in about five tablespoons or so of just regular table salt. Now, I'm gonna add in a little bit of onion powder, so about a tablespoon. Now you can either use the coarse ground pepper, or you can use the fine. Got some fine here. And then we gotta add in the heat. I think just a teaspoon of cayenne is okay, especially with all the pepper. Some thyme, remember thyme is, has a good flavor, but it's not too overpowering. So now you can have an herby seasoned salt if you want to. You can toss in some garlic if you would like. I think this is fine as is. Next, we're gonna make a sweet Southwest Chipotle inspired seasoning blend. You can make your own chili powder, but the cool thing about buying it too is that you can use store-bought chili powder as the base for recipes as well. We're gonna use some store-bought chili powder. We're gonna put two to three tablespoons of chili powder here. If you wanna use the one that you just made, you can do that too. Toss in some cumin. Say about one tablespoon of cumin. I'm gonna toss in some garlic powder, but I'm gonna switch it up this time and use a granulated kind. You can see the difference, it's not as powdery. Do a little bit of onion powder, about half a tablespoon. Some thyme. You can put this into a blender and grind it up if you'd like, so that way it's a really fine consistency. And then lastly, to sweeten it up a bit, we're gonna toss in some coconut sugar. About a tablespoon or two of this. 
coconut sugar tends to clump, so this would be a good one to put into a blender or just use a fork and kind of mash out all those clumps. All right, so for the last one, we're gonna be using a blender because we're gonna be using some atypical ingredients in this blend, and so it's much better if we have a food processor or a high-powered blender to really mix and meld and grind the flavors together. We are making a Thai coconut-inspired rub. First thing we're gonna add is some dried coconut flakes. Gonna have about a half to three-fourths cup. Gonna add in some red chili flakes, adding in about a teaspoon of cumin. Gonna add in some of the granulated garlic, about a teaspoon of that. Really awesome ingredient, powdered peanut butter. Just about two teaspoons of this. Even though this is powder, it does tend to clump. This is dried coconut, but there's still a little bit of moisture in there, so you don't want everything to clump together. Let's pop the top. All right, this is almost the texture that we want. This is going to be a rub, so whenever you put this on, to some vegetables or some um, protein. It's gonna have a texture on there. It's sweet because of the coconut. It's spicy with the red pepper. The peanut butter is just the right amount. It's a great one to add to your diet. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. I hope that y'all really enjoyed it. There are a ton of ways that you can add variety and flavor to your diet. First thing is don't be overwhelmed by thinking that you've gotta go and get everything at once. Just start with my essential list here and I guarantee that will help to get your feet wet in the kitchen. It's gonna get your palate tasting different flavors and also some different textures too. And then gradually just begin to experiment in the kitchen and mix and match different spices together. Some stuff you will like, some stuff not so much. It's all good because it is all a part of the process and we have all been there before. Remember, you can get all the recipes and the macronutrient breakdown, if any, for these rubs on fitmingcook.com. All right, I want you all to comment below your favorite spice combination and also your go-to spices for the kitchen so that we can all learn from you on how you are keeping your diet interesting and flavorful. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I want y'all to keep it healthy, but of course, what? Never ever boring. Boom! Bye, y'all.